This is lovely. You guys ready? Well, I'm joined today uh, by Representative Kent Smith, uh, as well as mayors and chiefs of police uh, from Walton Hills, Maple Heights, Euclid, Brooklyn, and Gates Mills. Uh, we thank Euclid for, for hosting us today. Um, this is an opportunity for me to sit down and talk uh, with chiefs of police, as well as mayors uh, from sm some of our smaller communities and just listen to the problems uh, that they have in regard to law enforcement. We also want to make sure that everyone was aware of the additional uh, dollars that will be coming available in April. Uh, this was a bill that we asked the General Assembly to pass to take $250 million of the federal dollars uh, and devote them to law enforcement. Uh, the areas that we are emphasizing with this $250 million uh, is wellness for police officers, mental health issues, uh, and violent crime. Uh, those are the two uh, really kind of big things that this, this money is focused on. But there is a great deal of flexibility for local police departments and mayors to define how they want to want to spend that money. So we, we brief them on that money. Uh, these are also communities that have just received uh, the announcement that they will be receiving some money uh, for body cameras. Uh, we will have more announcements about additional communities getting money for body cameras uh, and more opportunities for communities to, to apply for body cameras. Uh, so that really was the, the purpose today. It's always good. Uh, frankly, just to hear exactly what is, is going on in different communities. And even in uh, smaller communities, we still uh, can have violent crime. And what is true in our bigger cities is also true in our smaller communities. And that is that the people who are committing the violent crime are a small number of the criminal element. It is a small number of people. And we are going to save lives and keep our communities uh, free of that, this violent crime. We have to really target uh, and go after uh, these individuals. And this is one of the reasons that we're asking the state legislature, I'm asking the state legislature uh, to, to pass a bill uh, that focuses on repeat violent offenders and would increase, dramatically increase the penalty that a judge could impose for someone who is a violent criminal, already been convicted, uh, who goes out and then is in the possession of a gun. When someone in Ohio is uh, convicted of a violent crime, they no longer have the right to, to own a gun and have a gun. Uh, we need to increase the penalty for people who violate that, and that's one of the, one of the bills that we have, we have asked the General Assembly to pass. So uh, more than happy to answer uh, any questions. I don't know if any of our mayors or chiefs want to say anything about any of these topics. We can, uh, anybody? Mayor, Mayor Chief, go yeah, ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Scott Meyer, Chief of Police of the Police Department. I just want to thank the state for their support. Um, you know, the police departments uh, across the nation, certainly here in Euclid, we're, you know, trying to do two things simultaneously. We're always looking to build trust and relationships with our communities, but we're also taxed with, with dealing with this, this violent crime. Um, so these kind of initiatives and these kind of, this kind of funding and support uh, really means a lot to uh, not only to, you know, city leaders and to the police department, but also to our residents, too. So I really want to appreciate it and, and thank the governor. Thank you, Chief. Anybody else? Anybody? Um, we'll, we'll be happy to answer any questions. Is part of the, the body cam grant, are, is there any language or thought about the terms, strings attached to the grants so that the policy that the department implements when it has body cameras is up to the state lighting, the state standards. Yeah, let, let, let me ask my team over here. Is is what, what are the what are the criteria, Andy? To, to here, here, you need, come on up here. <laughs> Give to, me your name. I'm Andy Wilson. My title is senior advisor for criminal justice policy for the governor's office. Thank you. The uh, the 
precondition for getting these bodyboard camera grants, the only precondition really, was that you had to be compliant with the Ohio Community Police Collaborative's body-worn camera standard. Uh, and basically that says that you have to have a policy and, and certain aspects of, of your policy uh, have to be in line with uh, what the state is doing in the Community Police Collaborative. So that's it. That was the only string, string attached to, need, to these grants. You follow best practices, basically. Absolutely. Thank you. Anybody else? Explain to me again, you know, what is the importance of having body cameras for the community, but also the police departments to protect? Well, I, I think it protects the police, and I think it protects the public to have body cameras. Uh, this is a question of transparency. Uh, we now have the technology to have body cameras, and, and quite frankly, the public expects body cameras today. Um, we, we've kind of evolved in, uh, over the years in what uh, the technology is, and this is keeping up with the technology. And again, it is one additional way to have transparency, accountability. Uh, police officers appreciate it because it protects them uh, as well as protecting the public. And look, the reality and the reason we did this grant and the reason we're going to do additional money is that this is not cheap. It's not cheap to have body cameras. It's not just putting a, a camera on a police officer and uh, telling him or her, you know, how it is turned on and how it operates. Um, this information has to be stored. It's very expensive to store this information. It also has to be retrieved. So when something occurs, news media wants to see it or someone else needs to see it, a court needs to see it, police have to go back, they have to have someone who takes time to go through it and pull out that, that point, in, point in time. So that it is not a cheap proposition. And as we put out standards for the use of body cameras and it became more apparent, more and more police departments wanted to use it, they basically raised their hand and said, look, we want to use it, but we can't afford it. It's not, we, we can't afford not only just not to buy the cameras, we can't afford to uh, store it. We can't afford to pay somebody to pull down the data. So it's an expensive operation. It's not cheap. Anybody else? Okay. Any questions for any of the group behind me? All right, everybody's happy. Good. Thank you all very much. Would like to answer this question. Um, you know, why do you want body cameras? You know, or why do you want this program within your respective department? Todd Hanson from Maple Heights. Uh, the transparency issue obviously is great. It is protection for officers. I mean, we found over the years the complaints that come in, uh, the officers are exonerated many times. Uh, people just, you know, maybe they misread what the situation was. It's a stressful situation usually. So it's a protection for officers. Also, the transparency for the community, uh, but in addition to that, the courts have gotten to the point where any of the cases that we have uh, need to be adjudicated and and it's only successful with body camera footage. They, they expect that, they want to see it, so it's very important from that standpoint that we have that footage to go ahead and get successful.